October 6th discussion group. So glad that you're here tonight. We are finally moving into Proverbs 15. We were in 14 for three weeks. Oops, three, three, four. And so I'm excited. We're getting close to the halfway mark of the book of Proverbs. But before we jump in, Stephanie is going to open us in prayer. So go ahead, Stephanie. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening to thank you once again for bringing us all together to learn more about your word, to become closer to you, and hopefully to take on your character and live the life that you want us to. We thank you and we love you. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes. That is definitely what this that is just about. Gave me chills. Yes. Wanting to be closer to God and wanting to be more like him and choose the path that draws us closer to him, which is the path of wisdom. So I'm going to share my screen. You can open your Bibles to Proverbs 15. Quit really lighten it all up as we go through these. I guess I should. Okay. In Proverbs 15, we start off with a really well-known proverb, which um, we've you've probably heard quoted, you've probably seen it on plaques, on the front of journals. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And I'm sure this is um, translated maybe with some different words for gentle. Like I think I saw one that said soft. Mm. Um, what else do What else do you have? What other translations do we have out there that um, kind of pit these against each other? This gentle way of answering someone that turns away the anger and the other one that stirs it up. Um, Joan? Uh, the voice says a tender answer turns away rage. Tender. Okay. But a prickly reply <laughs> bikes anger. Prickly. So tender, is that what it was, tender? Yeah, a tender answer. Soft. And then harsh. Prickly. Prickly. <laughs> I don't know if I'm spelling that right quickly. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Anybody else have another word for gentle and harsh in your translation? King James is, says grievous words. Ooh, grievous. Interesting. Soft answer and grievous, grievous. words. I, yeah. Oh, grievous. Grievous is the second one. Sorry. And what was the first one? Soft? Soft. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else have anything? The passion translation says sharp cutting words or painful words for the for this for the second one because the first one's gent gentle oh okay sharp cutting painful. painful we're getting a picture here any other synonyms in your translations no uh, the message says a sharp tongue okay sharp sharp tongue what does it say for the other one gentle or soft gentle or small. that seems to be a, a used over and over so have you seen this to be true in your life or in at work or in your family relationships when do you have a story about maybe when a gentle answer calmed things down calmed the anger calmed all the heightened emotions and drama or when maybe you said something without thinking and it kind of stirred everybody up and got them all going. <laughs> Confession time, right? Can you think of an example? I'm sure we all have, have done both. Let's just be honest. We've all, you know, had a moment of wisdom where we, we just, we were able to say something that kept the peace and um, calmed down the angry person. Sometimes, Sometimes that can be done by taking things on yourself by saying, you know, oh, I can see you're angry and, you know, and I apologize if, if I had anything to do with that. Maybe somebody comes at you when they're angry. Um, maybe it's just an angry situation and um, you have a choice of saying something that can 
stir the pot and make it worse or something that can kind of calm things down. Yeah, Jamie, you're muted. So you'll, there you go. There you go. I was trying, it wasn't cooperating. Well, yeah, if somebody comes at you harsh, automatically you're going to be defensive and you're going to be harsh back I mean, sometimes. Yeah, that's but if you're nice to them, they're going to respond nicely back. Most of the time. Yep. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah, and that is the temptation. I think um, if somebody's upset and they come right at you, it is to get defensive, right? Well, I, right, you know, exactly. well, I didn't do that. You you did that, and and so yeah, you're right. It, that's our natural temptation. So we we kind of have to think about this ahead of time before it happens. And then when we're in that situation, oh, this is the time I need to have that that gentle, soft, tender word, right? Instead of the prickly, grievous, sharp, cutting, painful. You know, I mean, sometimes in this day, in this culture, the person that can make the sharpest, meanest comment is, seems like they're the victor, right? They're the funny one. They're the, ooh, you know, you know, they slice that person down. Um, so sometimes having the gentle answer isn't always looked upon with respect in this culture. Would you agree with that? Yeah, ooh, she took him down or like, you know, like people applaud the fact that you can slice somebody up with your words. Well, social media has made it so convenient to just. Oh, yeah. just oh my gosh. Yes. Go back at each other and say that is things. that's a great point. You know, we we can say a lot of really mean things online that we would never say to somebody in person. We've talked about that before on here. But yeah, it's important. I'm, our words are important, right? I mean, I know, I know I, I gave a sermon last week about listening. Um, but it's also important to talk about what we actually say with our mouth. Because um, mm -hmm. it has power, right? Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words may never hurt me it is not true. <laughs> it's just not true. Words do hurt. Yeah. James mentions about the tongue, how it's uh, no man can tame it. And, uh, uh, it sparks, a, like a, a spark, a, that, yeah. A world of iniquity and things like that. And yeah, he uses a lot of great pictures, like um, a spark that starts a forest fire, or or yeah. a rudder on a ship that can steer. Yeah, James, the Book of James does, and I know I think we just preached on that not too long ago. Um, Go ahead. And Paul, Paul told, told Titus about sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. And he said in Colossians, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. And then the Ephesians says, let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Yeah, there's a, a lot. lot of, yeah. Good point. Your point is made. There's a lot of scriptures on how we use our tongue. It's important. And verse two goes on to say, the tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge. That's an interesting way to word it. But the mouth of the fool gushes folly. You know, um, and once again, back to that quote, better to be a fool and keep your mouth shut than to open it and open it and prove prove them right or something like that remove all doubt remove all doubt thank you <laughs> get that i gotta commit that to memory yeah john the message says knowledge flows like spring water from the wise oh okay i, I like that but fools are leaky faucets dripping <laughs> nonsense <laughs> i like that leaky faucets right but dripping. fools say that are again leaky, but... are leaky faucets dripping nonsense <laughs> <laughs> that's good jamie when wisdom speaks understanding becomes attractive but the words of the fool make their ignorance look laughable oh okay okay that's good yeah, you like the leaky faucet one that's funny anyway, yes leaky faucets dripping what Nonsense. Nonsense. Can you read that one more time, Jamie? 
Yes, of the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. When wisdom speaks, understanding becomes attractive, but the words of the fool make their ignorance look laughable. Wow. That's a mouthful. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, I think it's getting at the heart of what this is, is, is about. It's, it's, it's opening your mouth and gushing forth sure foolishness. Was. And it's just making it so obvious that this person who, you know, is not chasing after wisdom and is just opening their mouth and not really thinking before they speak. Open mouth and short foot. Right. Exactly. And we've all been there, right? We've all done we're both, both feet. of these. I mean, yeah, we're both feet. Or both feet, yeah. Um, I've jumped in with both feet. So yeah, both of those translations help me understand the tongue of the wise adorning knowledge because it's kind of a different way of, of wording it. But, um, you know, it's, it's when you adorn something like you adorn yourself with jewelry or you adorn a tree with decorations, it's, it's, it's attractive, right? Rather than the foolishness that is non-attractive. And that's following the verse right before it where... I mean, I guess you could say, you could merge the two and say, the tongue of the wise gives a gentle answer, right? Mm -hmm. And the mouth of the fool stirs up, uses harsh words or has a sharp cutting tongue and stirs up anger. So you can see that a lot of hothead, we talked about this last time, the, the word hothead, you know, where we just spout off and don't think before we're, we're speaking it can stir up a lot more uh, grief for people. And Is that along the lines of you get more bees with honey? It, it could be. I mean, yeah, that's a proverb. Then vinegar. Yeah, the vinegar. Yeah, then vinegar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the New Living Translation says the mouth of a fool belches out <laughs> foolishness. Oh, my. <laughs> you know, it's like it just comes out. She's yeah. got belches and stupidity in hers. Mark just pours forth. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. As Mark just pointed out, belching isn't always controllable. It just like comes out, right? So it's well, like you open your mouth and it just goes out like a trumpet. Just get this picture of this fool just belching out foolishness. That's amazing. Yeah. I just did it to a Leon duo a little bit ago. I went to my, I say something to her. She asked me a question. I went to answer out my mouth and it just came roaring out and she goes oh my gosh mommy and i'm like i'm so sorry that happens when you drink it bubbly very loud. stuff so so i guess we're, let me look and see when we go on we're talking about the eyes no we, we keep talking about the tongue i'm like i guess i was before we go on i was just gonna say you know how how do we keep from being the fool that belches out foolishness how do we keep from leak being a leaky faucet dripping out nonsense we study to show ourselves approved think yeah, before we speak chase after wisdom think before you speak and i think it has to be a daily formation thing so that because it you and know out of the abundance the of the mouth the heart speaks right so yes, right. if we're not forming ourselves That's every the other word now out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks that's what i just said what did what did mom just say did I say it wrong? No. You said out. Yeah, you said out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaks. I did. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> well, that that <laughs> what did she say? I think I I'm, I switched it. I I guess I said out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaks. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Me, I'm listening. You are listening. Good job. You're my editor. Um, I'm, I'm glad you, the rest of you heard it the way I actually meant it. Yeah, but he's listening to, to critique. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah so, so <laughs> for instance, when you drink a, something bubbly with a lot of carbonation, the bubbles have to come out. They, they oh, yeah, melt out, water, right? One way or the other. Right. So, so I think, you know, if we're, if we're eating foolishness and, drinking foolishness, foolishness is going to flow out of us. And so um, one of the proverbs, I think, in the, in the later in the chapter, you know, talks about being around wise people, like hanging around wise people is going to make you more wise, right? Rather than hanging around foolishness and, you know, eating, feeding yourself with foolishness will continue to make you foolish. Um, 
any thoughts on that? I was just pondering, like, how, how do we not fall into this trap of being foolish? Well, what you put in your mind is going to affect how you're speaking. Yeah, it's true. Think about how Jesus would respond or what he would say. Yeah, study his life. And if you do that every day, it starts to form you and shape you. Yeah. Right. Of course, you flipped over some serious tables. So I guess that means if we get mad, we can flip over furniture, right? <laughs> if it's righteous. Yeah, but his was right. Righteous I know. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm I know just you're kidding. being funny. Um, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. That's, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. That's all one thing, they isn't it? Everything that happens. I think it is. Watch the soothing it. tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse oh, tongue crushes he the He knows spirit. when you've been naughty, and he knows when you've been nice. Mark. Santa Claus. Really? Yeah. I yeah. hate that he song. He does not belong in the same sentence with Christ. So I, I see... You know the the tongue theme is is coming down is falling from first, verse one two and verse four. So what's this verse three in here? The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. Thank God. Does it does it is this a separate thought, or do you think that's it's right in the flow of talking about the tongue and? I think it's right in the flow of it. Well, mine hasn't separated. He's watching and he's seeing everything and hearing everything. So I think that goes along with it. Okay. Yeah, the message says God doesn't miss a thing. He's alert to good and evil alike. So he sees and hears what's coming out of our, our mouths. Yeah. He's better right. than Santa Claus. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. So once again, pointing to the power that we have in our in the tongue so the tongue can be used for good or or evil anybody else have a thought on that what was another translation for breach for breach what is what is the last thing you said what, what translation did you use um, I'm in the NIV. A perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Okay, crushes. What do you have? In, your... it's in King James, a, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But the verses therein is a breach in the spirit. A breach in the spirit. Okay. Right. Is that, what is that? A break or something? A break. Yeah, it's a break. a break in the spirit. So yeah, that I guess that <clears throat> in the NIV they say crushes. So it's yeah, a breach is a disconnect. Oh yeah, a breach, is, yeah. Disconnect. Disconnect. A fool spurns a parent's discipline, but whoever heeds correction shows prudence. So I think this is going on to another thought. Although I do see lips down in seven. <laughs> and what are we on? Um, we're on five. five. Oh, we skipped. Oh, I didn't even know we went on four. Remember yeah, we're talking about, about breach and breaks. Crushing the spirit, soothing tongue. Mm. Just following up on the fact that our, our words can be powerful, right? Used for good, for healing, or for evil, for crushing or breaking. Oh, you're stupid to mock the instruction of the father, but welcoming correction will make you brilliant. Brilliant. Wow. Wow, yeah. Read that, can you read that again? Nice yeah. enough. You're, you're stupid to mock the instruction of the Father, but welcoming correction will make you... Mm. Mm. She froze. Wow. Heating says. correction? What did it say? Um, oh, that's what mine says. Welcoming correction. Welcoming. Will make you brilliant. I, we didn't hear the last word. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, that's, um, you know, a wise person wants to change, right? A wise person wants to be different and is seeking correction. Correction is not fun. Nobody likes correction, but a wise person welcomes it, right? I mean, the correction isn't fun, but if we're not willing to be corrected or we don't seek out people to help 
make us better, then look in the mirror. That's that's all you get. This is going to be Ann Stapleton in 10 years from now if I don't welcome correction. Well, yeah, right? if we're not being corrected, we're not learning anything. Right, we're not growing. Yep. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, exactly. We're not learning anything. We're not growing. We're not becoming brilliant. <laughs> So what are some ways that you all welcome correction? I don't know. What does my accountability partner say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you do ask for opinion on things and I, you know, you've given me permission to be honest with you. Absolutely. So, um, it's not always easy to be honest with somebody, but if they welcome it, if they tell you to welcome it and they receive it, then it's a good thing because you know it's out of love. Oh well, yes, it, you do it with grace and love and, and 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 humility, and so it just it goes over very very smoothly. And I absolutely welcome it. So an accountability partner or a friend, um, scripture, right? Reading scripture can can correct us, right? We read a scripture and it convicts us and. We can see how we were wrong or we were in the wrong attitude. I think that happens a lot, doesn't it? There other ways, are there other ways that you can welcome correction? Well, I mean, I guess you can pray and ask for it. <laughs> that's scary. I don't know if that's a scary prayer. Woo! You know? Sometimes you gotta be careful what you ask for. Exactly. Well, when you get correction, uh, first reaction may be defensiveness. And so that's when you have to stop and think. Um, I've gotten mm -hmm. some correction in an email and Ooh. upset, but um, sleep on it. Well, if you're a person, you might have to say, um, thank you. I need to think about that. And but don't just react and blurt out your defensiveness because then you won't accept that correction those are wise words right there if somebody does correct you and it hurts it stings to sleep on it and then ask god you know is there anything in this that's true that i need to learn from and the holy spirit will show you um you know the the holy spirit um can sing and encourage us, but it can also sting and grow us, right? At the same time, and um, but it's out of love, right? When we correct our kids, we are correcting them because we want them to grow up well. Of course. Yeah, of course. Well, um, okay, going on to verse six, the house of the righteous contains, what is it, contains treasure, but the income, of the wicked brings ruin. House of the righteous contains treasure. Wonder what kind of treasure that is. The income of the wicked brings ruin. I'm curious what other translations say in this. Mine says prosperity. Prosperity, okay. Yes. And what does it say for the, the wicked? The house of the wicked is filled with trouble. Trouble, okay. But as no matter how much money they have. King James says the revenue of the wicked so is from it. Okay. All right. What does King James say for um, the treasure? Uh, in the house of righteous, there is much treasure. Treasure. Okay. There's treasure. Anybody else have a? Well, the message says the lives of God loyal people flourish. Oh, okay. A misspent life is soon bankrupt. So more than in trouble, bankrupt. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that would be more than trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a theme we've seen running through Proverbs. Verse seven says, the lips of the wise spread knowledge, but the hearts of fools are not upright are not what? Mm -hmm. Upright. Oh, upright. 
lips spread knowledge, the lips of the wise. So we talked about that, you know, if you're, if you're feeding yourself with knowledge, hanging around people who are wise, I'm sorry, feeding yourself with wisdom, hanging around people who are wise, out of your mouth will come wise things, right? Um, the hearts of a fool, and I guess it kind of ties into the one right before it, are bankrupt, right? They're, they're empty, yeah. they're foolish. There's not a lot of treasure. Have you ever met somebody who's just really wise and every word you just hang on it because because it's treasure it's gold yeah you know? that would be stanley i know i was gonna say stanley <laughs> 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 just you know just gold where the words that come out are they spread knowledge and hearts of fools are not upright what's another word for upright righteous what would what do you guys have in your well, the New Living Translation says the heart of a fool has none to give, meaning advice. Oh, it's no empty. Advice to give. The wise give good advice and the heart of the fool has none to give. <laughs> oh. The passage well, I... says when wisdom speaks, revelation knowledge is released, but finding true wisdom in the word of a fool, of a fool is, fu is futile. futile. Yeah. 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 To receive, yeah. what's that? What's that thing from Star Trek? It is futile. It is futile. Really? Oh, Res resistance. resistance is futile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Resistance is yeah. I always think of that when I see that word. The King James says, um, "The lips of the wise disperse wisdom, knowledge, okay. but the heart of the fool does not do so." There you go. No knowledge to be found. Right. Well, verse eight says the Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases him. The yeah, Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked. It's despicable to the Lord when people use but the prayer almighty. of the upright pleases him. And this, yeah. this obviously has to do with the heart, right? Wow. Right. The passion says it is despicable to the Lord when people use the worship of the almighty as a cloak for their sin but every prayer of the righteous is pleasing to his heart. Wow. Yeah. Like oh, that was deep. Hypocrisy, right? Yes. Pretending. Wow. I think mine says the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Wow. I think the version, the passion that, that Jamie was reading mm -hmm. kind of gives the way of the a window way. into, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, I think God's upset when, when people aren't going his way, but like in the passion when Jamie, when Jamie read the idea of using religion as a cloak to do evil, probably ups it a notch. It's one of the worst things. It's awful. It's awful. Because they're doing evil in his name. Doing evil in his name. Whether they say it or not. And that's. Yeah, that's, that's that is detestable that's, or abomin that's abominable. Yeah. Like um, Stephanie said in uh, the hey. King James. Yeah. Okay. Don't use religion mm -hmm. as a cloak. Religion or worship, right? Um, or evil. That also could apply, I suppose, to the terrorists that the religious martyrs in islam i, I would they, agree with that yeah suicide. they think that they're being very very devout right yeah. it, 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 i mean it's an abomination of mankind too but yeah um, certainly not to them yeah that's a that's an interesting thing since it's a matter of i mean i i, I typed in there it's a matter of the heart makes you wonder it makes you wonder if like if a suicide bomber or somebody who's doing it to defend they're doing it to defend their faith if they they feel very devout right they feel like they're I feel like it is worship yeah they feel like this is the yeah. ultimate act of worship right to lay down their life for their faith um hey ann yeah we seem to be having an issue with our computer. We keep freezing, and so I have to keep turning off the camera. 
but it's it keeps doing something weird and it just popped up what it looked like something that was on your computer that has the host and the and the and the people in it to mute and unmute and invite people and i don't know what it was but oh, they hit participant we're just letting you know that if we go down I, you'll understand yeah. we're having issues it's it's i don't know it's there's a ghost in here or something yeah you probably open the participants panel which anybody can open this this thing i keep saying something about updating too and i and i was afraid to touch anything so next time i get on should i do that yeah, I'll probably update it next time we get on. Okay. okay. All right. Sorry. I'm continue. sorry. Continue. No, it's okay. Um, I guess I was just pondering in my brain if um, somebody who, let's just say somebody is on TV selling prayer cloths and they know it's a scam and they're ripping people off. Um, not prayer cloths, maybe I'm trying to think like holy water or something and and they know that it's a scam and they're just doing it out of greed and and ripping people off is that the same as somebody who gives their whole life and dies for what they believe is right even though maybe it's wrong <laughs> it's dead wrong you know because <clears throat> one person is pretending to be something and then doing something evil underneath yeah like like the what Jamie read, the cloak, they're using worship or religion as a cloak. Where's the other oh, person, no. the suicide bomber that, or the suicide, um, he wrote it right there. That, that Stanley brought up. Like yeah. The hottest. I think you got to really believe in what you, you're doing to like strap a bomb to your body and die mm. for, for your faith. Well, I suppose the people that followed Jim Jones really believed what they were doing too, but gosh. Yeah. I mean. Oh, they'd have to. You know, I mean, for the most part, maybe not have to. Um, well, I'm sure there's people who have died for Jesus too. I mean, somebody walks up and says, do you believe in Jesus? They say yes, and they get their head, they, they get their yeah. head blown off. Right. I mean, basically it's the same thing, isn't it? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean. If you're born to believe in another God and you've never heard of, of Jesus and you give your life for that God, I don't know. I'm not sure if there's an issue with at the expense of at the expense other, of other lives. Yeah. yeah. That is that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. yeah, it's not they're not just dying, they're actually taking lives. Right. Right. Yeah. Anyway, just I was just cogitating that. Um the Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but prayer of the upright pleases him. The Lord detests. Not like the people who, who speed on the freeway. It's like if you're gonna if you're gonna kill yourself, go by yourself. Don't take me with you. <laughs> right. And verse nine says, "The Lord detests the way of the wicked, but He loves those who pursue righteousness." So it's kind of a repeat, in a way, right? Just listing. Well, mine is purity. Who pursue righteousness? Yeah. Purity. Okay. And what does it say for the wicked? Wicked. Oh, wicked. Okay. Pretty much it says the same thing you just read. Yeah. Test the light. And mine uses the word abomination again. Do you want to say something? Wicked, yes. The way of the wicked is an abomination. Do you want to say something? The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. Yeah. A okay. life for a life frittered away disgusts God. Oh, okay. He loves those. He loves those who run straight for the finish line. <clears throat> so if we fritter away our life, we're not following God. We're just wasting our life, really. Meandering around, not kind of yeah. straight. Yeah. Purposeful. The fritter. Yeah. What was that? Yes. Apple fritter. <laughs> fritter Mark, apple. you yes. know what? You are a card. <laughs> Pursue righteousness. The Joker. Run straight to God. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. True. Wouldn't have it any other way. So it's interesting that you think God detests the people or just the way? The way. The way of the wicked. The sacrifice of the wicked he hates the sin not the sinner right yeah 
Otherwise, he wouldn't have died. Were you testing too. me, Anne? <laughs> <laughs> Thinking out loud. Um, stern discipline awaits anyone who leaves the path. The one who hates correction will die. Is that that's all the same? That should be in the same box. Yeah, I think. Stern discipline awaits anyone who leaves the path. Severe punishment is harsh discipline. Okay, stern, says, harsh. So mine says severe. Severe. Okay. Mine severe. turns away from the truth. <clears throat> Harsh. Severe. I always give the term the way. Yeah, this one says rebel okay. against correction. Okay, rebel against correction. The one who hates correction will die. Oh, okay, I see. Hates. Mine is rebel. Uh, the one who rebels against. Yeah, that's what Carol said. Earlier. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Well, you know, several of the translations say the same thing. Yeah. Just I like to hear the the, the differences in, in the different ones because I do too. it really so, brings it clear. Yeah, so I mean, this is obviously hearkening back to what we just read about about welcoming correction, right? And this is saying if you don't, if you hate correction, you you know yeah. you're you're headed down a bad path. If you hate correction, you will die. Does anybody else have anything besides die? Hates correction, the one who hates correction will die? No, no. It all says the same thing. Well, the message just says it's a dead end street. Okay. Yeah, it's true. Dead end street, okay. And then 11 says, death and destruction lie open before the Lord. How much more do human hearts? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, even hell itself holds no secrets from the Lord God. But, uh, for before his eyes, all is exposed. So much more the heart of every human being. Wow. Oh, that's just deep. <laughs> yeah. Whew. She said death and destruction. Mine says hell and destruction. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. But then hell is a death. Yeah. Death and destruction. Hell and destruction. The light open before the Lord. That's interesting because the, the verse right before it says the one who hates correction will die, but death and destruction lie open before God. How much more do human hearts lie open before God? I think, you know, it's all, it's all within his power. It's all within, he right. sees everything. So I think it goes back, you know, all is exposed before God. And then we set up here, what a matter of the heart, right? Um, where was it? That yeah, verse saw? three. Uh, Verse three. God did, in hers that he's he's he doesn't miss a thing. Doesn't miss a thing. Yep. God doesn't miss a thing. Even if you run into death and destruction, he sees it. It doesn't miss a thing. Any other thoughts on on verse eleven? No, I just need an explanation on number twelve. <laughs> okay. 12 mockers resent correction so they avoid the wise oh yeah that's so true so this is a know-it-all <laughs> yours says a know-it-all know yeah, the know-it-all never esteems the one who tries to correct him he refuses to seek good advice from the wise <laughs> that's a know-it-all <laughs> well and that figures i mean if you think you know it all why would you yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's part of the problem with the accountability thing. You, you try to tell somebody something and they get, uh, instead of them, them just taking ownership of, of their issue and saying, you know, thank you, I'm being corrected. They want to point it, we all want to point it back at the other person. Absolutely. Well, some of the time. Well, not every time. I think when you have a, an accountability partner, though, um, you, you, you've you come to an understanding between you both and, and you're not going to act like that anyway we're so, talking about the normal regular type stuff yeah somebody who preaches that they know everything 
you know. Oh, hence the know it all. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So somebody who's kind of mocking wisdom, mocking the way of God. You know, they assume they know it all. On every, have you ever met anybody who who they think they're the expert on every subject? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And they just they, they lie. They're the ones who are doing it right, and you're not. I got family members that are like that. <laughs> You know, and it's like, it, it's a, it's a lie. There's no way you can be the expert on every subject. It's, and it's, 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 it's not very attractive, honestly. It doesn't make me mm-hmm. want to be around people. Right. You don't want to be around them because I mean, you, you always feel like you're stupid right. and you're put down and you're, you're, you, you know, you don't know anything and never will. Unfortunately, my sister like, Nancy's know. all like that too. You can't tell her anything. She knows everything about well, everything. That's why I just said family members. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I thought you were talking about somebody else. Well, I was just I'll uh, edit that part out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um oh my god you know trying to keep from naming but, names. But, but nancy doesn't cute though she doesn't get like ornery about it so so a, a person who doesn't a person who thinks they know it all does not want to be around a wise person because a wise person is going to reveal that this faker <laughs> poser uh know-it-all mm-hmm. mocker doesn't know everything and so they don't they don't want to be corrected they don't want to right um be in the presence of somebody who's going to call maybe call them on stuff yeah and so they're going to avoid the wise but a wise person is going to find and look for other wise people so they can right. learn and grow learn more. And, right yes well, and don't look my direction it's kind of like when you're in a profession or maybe maybe you like to play basketball or or something and you you play with people who are not as good as you, you, you kind of stay on their level, but then if you play with people who are better than you, it ups your game. It's kind of like that with wisdom, you know, hang out, read authors who are wiser than you and it will start to make you wise. Um, love this one. A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but, but heartache crushes the spirit. And this is so true, isn't it? I mean, oh my um sometimes we have a happy heart right and you can see it on somebody's face and sometimes we're crushed and we have heartache and you can see that you know sometimes we try to fake it and not let others know we're crushed in the spirit but i think if you are tuned in to your friends and your family you can tell when somebody has a crushed heart right. spirit mine has a side scripture and, and it's, it's one that i love and i'm always talking about it and that's chapter 17 verse 22 which is a merry heart doeth good like medicine and i i love that scripture and so when i saw the little the little thing on the side of that i went and looked and turned off that's what it is so hmm. yeah that's and yeah. i and because you're just gonna set gloomy in your misery or whatever you're never you're never going to get better you know so, yeah i mean there's a time for grieving if you've lost a spouse or um right. you know, if you've lost something there's a time for grieving but as an overall lifestyle i mean scientists have shown that um laughter can be healing right mm-hmm. that yeah um counting your blessings and doing a gratitude journal That's can crazy. actually help you heal it elevates your blood pressure it helps release stress it actually can affect your health, you know, it's good for your bones, right? Oh, yeah, depression, it does um, ruin your health. Yeah. This and one says a broken heart leads to depression. Oh, does it? Mm-hmm. What version are you reading, Carol? Oh, passion. passion. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes, you know, sometimes it's medical and you need some medicine to help you come out of depression and sometimes um there are things you can do exercise eating right getting good sleep um and and having a gratitude journal if you start every single day thanking god for three things it changes the way it changes the neural pathways in your brain and you start to actually think in a more positive optimistic fashion oh yeah it definitely helps yeah So on to 14, making good progress. Okay. 
I got this. The discerning heart seeks knowledge, but the mouth of a fool feeds on folly. That sounds much like what we just read up above. Yeah. So what are some ways that you're going to eat wisdom <laughs> and not feed on folly? And I know, I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here because you all wouldn't be here if you weren't seeking wisdom. So right? when you hear something bad, just walk away. <laughs> yeah. Go to the other room. Yep, you can change, just change what you're listening to, change right. uh, what you're reading, change what you're watching. Oh, yeah. Change your friends. Whatever foolishness looks like for you. Okay, so all the days of the oppressed are wretched. Oh, that sounds so bad. That word wretch is just such a, it's one of those words. But the cheerful heart has a continual feast. So we're comparing um, wretched and feasting. all the days of the oppressed. So what what do you have in your translation for oppressed? I'm curious what this- Weak. Weak? Weak and yeah, mine says mine's is weak and depressed. Mine says afflicted. Oh, interesting. Okay, mine says oppressed, which can be something that's put on you. You're saying afflicted, okay. So that could be like going through a trial. Mm -hmm. Weak, you said? Yes. Okay. Sometimes that's not our choice, right? All the days of the oppressed are wretched. Wretched. But the cheerful heart has a continual feast. Can you have a cheerful heart in the middle of being afflicted? It's very difficult, but I think you can because you, you, just, you need to stop looking at what you don't have or what you aren't receiving and look at what you do have and have received and the passion you know, says it's a choice. choice it says you what? choose to be cheerful it's a choice no but when you you choice. Oh, the passion says it's a choice but choose. it's also a different you choose to be cheerful, when, cheerful but when you choose to be cheerful every day will bring bring you more joy and fulfillness mm -hmm. and fullness mm -hmm. what were you gonna say jamie just the, the people who actually you know suffer from depression it's not somebody says oh i'll take a walk to the park it's not that easy and the ones who don't the ones who don't who don't understand that's why they say that but there's a lot of people who can't just smile and pick them pick themselves up by the bootstraps and keep going yeah and that's why i mentioned that if you if there's a medical yeah right depression, there, there needs to be a medical intervention right um, I don't and think even those people smile doesn't mean yeah. that they're not depressed and heartbroken or whatever. And even in that case, even if you are um, treating depression medically, um, it's still health to your bones to choose cheerful and cheerful. Oh, oh, oh right, right. Cheerful sounds so like light. Um, I don't know, shallow. Yeah, that's the word I was going to say. I mean, what's another word we could use here instead of cheerful? Because cheerful just, you don't want to fake. It's, it's not. Okay. Well, in verse 13, when you said yours said happy, mine said cheerful. Okay. A happy and heart. This time it was cheerful. So happy. So happy. Let's turn it around. Well, mine says merry heart. Merry. Who okay. is of a merry heart. Carol, were you going to say something? Said many a day I've awakened and just felt rotten and nothing good was going to come today and and I choose no this is going to be a happy day I'm going to make this a happy day and I put on happy music and I start thinking start well one of the things that works every time is counting your blessings yep and you start counting the things you do have that's what I said it Absolutely. elevates your a lot yep. yeah mine is worship music. <laughs> Yep. Instead of looking at the glass half empty, look at it half full. Mm -hmm. Yeah, optimus. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Optimus. Right. And then you have a continual feast. So choose to be grateful, maybe, would be, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. 
That's a good word. You well, know, God it, says to give thanks at all times. Yeah, right. Um, not giving thanks for the misery, but giving thanks to him um, just for who he is and what he's done for us. Was that First Thessalonians, right? I, I Yeah. I can't remember the verse, but there's quite a few scriptures that say that. This is God's will for you to give thanks in everything. And, and it's not because he needs it for his ego. He, he says it because it's good for us, right? When we give thanks, like you said, Carol, you can wake up and, and just start complaining about everything. I mean, they're, they're real things. You might be in pain. You might be in debt. You might be in conflict with a friend. But, but you start counting the blessings and then you realize, okay, you know, put it, puts it in perspective, right? I do that a lot. I will just say, um, I, I, I count myself as a realistic optimist. That's what I call myself. <laughs> a realistic optimist? A realistic optimist. So I am optimistic, but I'm also realistic. You know, I, I like to Can think mark the glass being... 100% full, half with water and half with air. <laughs> half with water, half with air. What do you, Mark? Uh, probably a couple of notches down for man. <laughs> a, little, <laughs> a little more realistic and a little less optimistic. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Verse 16. I think we'll do maybe one or two verses more. We've got six minutes. Better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. Better a little, meaning I guess little resources with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. Is that how you understand it? Yeah. The message says a simple life in, okay. the, fear, in the fear of God is better than a rich life with a ton of headaches. Okay. People who are rich are always worried about somebody stealing their money. Stealing their stuff. <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Better a simple life. Yeah. Yeah, the voice says to, um, uh, better, it's better than to have the riches and carry the burdens that come with them. Oh. Uh. That's true. Yeah, where are you going to store all your stuff? <laughs> and all the people number trying to take your stuff. And, wow. and what if you lose your stuff? Yeah. It's true. I mean, I think there is a level where you need to have enough stuff to live. Like poverty also produces bad results too. But, um, you know, I think if you're talking in extremes, um, I think sometimes simplicity can keep us focused on God, you know, when we don't have a lot. Right. Life is less complicated. Life is less complicated. Yeah. yeah. So I was, I was watching The Voice last night while I was working and there was a young lady whose parents were from Cameroon, West Africa, and they moved to America and they were raising their kids here but they decided to move the kids back to West Africa so they would get a perspective on life because they realized living, growing up in America, you're kind of in a bubble, like this um, wealth bubble, um, entitlement, entitlement bubble. bubble. So they moved their family back to Cameroon and no cell phones, no tablets, no computers. And, and so this young lady who was auditioning for The Voice said it didn't take too long. At first, it was a shock to her system. She was like 10, I think. But then she got used to it. It was like face-to-face, -face, people sitting around and singing and making music and talking. And, and when she came back to America as an older teenager, that was a real shock because reverse um, culture shock. it was a reverse culture shock, right? But she was, she was talking about how things were so relational over there because it was simple. They didn't have a lot of wealth. And they lived very simple lives. And I think that that kind of illustrates this verse a little bit. Um, she came back over and now she's around all these kids who have everything and are completely depressed, you know, and want to end their lives. 
And it's like, wow, you know, sometimes wealth is not a blessing. Because it's never enough. Because it's a curse. Right. Because it's never enough. Oh, yeah, that's, I got to put that in there. Physical wealth is never enough. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good word. I want that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. I don't want to be a lot's wife. I don't want to, you know, have it holding me here. I mean, I, you know. So I think this next one goes with that. So we'll, we'll read this last one and then end. Okay. Better a small serving of vegetables, right on, with love, than a fatted calf with hatred. <laughs> exactly what mine says. <laughs> Uh, mine says it's much better to have a meal of vegetables surrounded with love and grace than a steak where there is hate and that that's you and mark let's hear it for the veggies right uh well that was like wow that's between mark and ann right there so you know i i think this is speaking of um in that day and age um to have a, a calf is to have wealth right a fatted right. calf means you've got means and yeah. so it's kind of just illustrating the verse before it. Um, yeah. How many of you have been around people who have stuff and, and family sit around a table and they fight over stuff? I'm telling you, when, when we do funerals and we're around families, when somebody passes away, it is the saddest thing when the yeah. family sits around and bickers and fights over money and the, the person's body is not even cold yet. And yeah. all they can do is fight over money. And sometimes not just money. It's, yeah, it's things and things it's, or, I don't know, it better to have a small hurts, serving of veggies with hurts, love, yeah. you know, it's, 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 if there's no money there to fight over, you know, maybe, maybe that would be a blessing <laughs> when somebody goes, you know, that's well, you my think goal. That would draw you closer together, not make you fight. Right. Yeah. But, but it's not, it's different. not just money and things. Um, Arthur Fulton's family and Maddie's, his wife's family, there have been deaths in both of these, you know, extended families. And they're just, you know, he just keeps asking for prayer for the families that they could try and get along because there's just dissent and upset about how things were handled and who did what. And mm -hmm. um, just, it's just been really difficult for them here to watch what's going on down in south where you know the families live well no i think one of the families is here in in the denver area and they're having to deal with what's going on with all these other family members we need love yeah. veggies and love that's, that's what, that's what we'll love, and, love and grace the passion says yeah. oh the passion says love and grace mm -hmm. yeah yeah my, yeah it's love and grace Well, that's a great note to end it on. I don't know if Ariana is yeah. still listening. Um, there she is. Did you hear? We ended on veggies, love, and grace. It's a great I love it. <laughs> So Ariana said she would close us out in prayer. So it's 8.01. <laughs> so unless anybody has any other comments before we praise us out, anybody, any thoughts or comments? No. Good words. Okay. All right, Ariana, go ahead and pray us out with some veggies and love. <laughs> veggies and love. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us more wisdom today. We pray that in everything that we could honor you in our words and our actions. And Father, forgive us for moments that. Forgive us for moments that we we fail, we fall short, but we thank you for your grace that it is there, that it's present. And uh, God, I pray for each person that passes our way that they would be blessed by us, by uh, us to train you well. God, I pray that you would empower our words, God, that you would give us the inspiration to speak wisdom in others' lives and in our own lives as well. Lord, I pray that we would always pursue righteousness in everything that we do, that we would never stop, we would never cease doing that, and that when criticism comes our way, Lord, that we would be able to 
have our hearts softened and not be defensive in those moments, but that we would honor you by learning more, by being uh, wiser in those moments and using those moments as uh, a teachable moment. So God, we thank you for groups like this that can teach us more, that can grow us more. And we pray that you would be with us in all that we do so that we can bless others, bless the world and glorify you in everything. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'll go ahead and stop recording. Please feel free to stay on and chat if you'd like to.